is um, beginning with us on a very powerful note. We are trusting him to be able to make the most of 2022. It's not um, a year that we're going to stumble upon carelessly. God will help us in the name of Jesus. Like I said in our drill, during the course of this lecture moment, uh, we will always begin by giving thanks to God for ushering us into a new year. Can you, can you, can you go before him <clears throat> with a heart of gratitude, with a heart of praise? Just exalt him. That's the way of men that want to become friends of God. Just exalt him. Just magnify him. We give you glory and we give you praise. Let your great name be glorified. We thank you for causing us to see this year. Many there be that have desired to see this moment but grace was not granted unto them. You are here because God hopes to draw pleasure from your life. It means you are part of the scheme of things from heaven's perspective. It's, it's a measure of mercy, manifestation of his grace. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Once again, thank you, O oh God, for the privilege to partake of another year. We do not take it for granted. We thank you for your compassion, for your mercy, and for your grace. And here tonight, we ask that you grant utterance to bring your counsel in simple, plain language as Jesus would have done if he were physically teaching us. Take all the glory and praise in Jesus' mighty name. You may be seated. Now, because of the way this year started, it started on a note of spiritual attacks. It started on a note of um, so many battles. We wanted to understand the significance of all of these battles in the scheme of things, God's scheme of things, and we began to perceive that it is the age of the watchmen. So, because of that, we'll begin to teach along these lines to equip the people of God to function effectively in this capacity that the grace of God has been made available so that we can make the most of the season that we find ourselves. I would like to begin by way of definition of terms. And as we study along the various moments when we will define some terminologies just to lend us the understanding of the concepts so that we can adequately comprehend this body of truth that the Lord will be passing across to us. The first um, word that we need to define is a watchman. And then subsequent words that are going to be frequently stumbled upon in our study, one of such is the watches, watches. So we'll start with the watchman, then we'll define what watches are. <laughs> and when we talk about watches, we're not talking about your wristwatch. Uh, it's a terminology that is consistent with the emphasis that we are bringing. So just a simple working definition, watchmen are prophets, comma, intercessors, comma, prophetic people, 
which watch in the spirit for three specific purposes. They are what? Prophets. They are intercessors and they are prophetic people. And the reason for the activities, the activities of these watchmen are captured within watches. You with me? And the activity of watching is in three perspectives. Are you with me? And I'm going to, if I have the time, I will show you that if God wants to do any major thing, what he does is that he first of all deploys the watchmen to begin to function. If watchmen do not begin to function, it might be difficult for God to implement a plan that is upon his heart. I'd like us to see a few examples of watchmen. Then we'll come back to our definition. And uh, when we come back, we are going to look at the three activities that constitute the activity of watches that watchmen are raised to do. Now turn with me to the book of Luke quickly. The book of Luke is a common scripture to us in this place. It's uh, one of my favorite scriptures. And uh, the scripture actually comes up again and again for various uh, purposes. But uh, we are going to look at it from a different perspective. Just trying to make us understand that in order for God to implement his purposes, we need, he needs to, first of all, deploy watchmen. In Luke chapter 2, verse 21, the Bible says, And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of our purification according to the law of the of the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the law. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy unto the Lord to offer a sacrifice according to that which is in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtledoves or two young pigeons. 25 is the beginning of my emphasis. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. That's his credential. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Verse 27, And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said. So even before the birth of Jesus, God had deployed watchers. And uh, in their activity, they paved the way for the manifestation of the plans of God. If we continue in the study, you are going to find a lady called Prophetess Anna. She was only married for seven years and her husband died. And God took away her desire for a man thereafter. And the only thing she found pleasure in doing was in seeking the face of God day and night. She was a watcher. And the information, the intelligence about the object of the emancipation of Israel and indeed the world which is Jesus Christ was revealed unto them. The intelligence as to what God wants to do it came to them firsthand, and you can imagine that Simeon walked into the temple without an invitation card, without a text message without a WhatsApp message, without a Facebook message, 
he showed up as though he was invited. But the Bible revealed that he came into the temple by the Spirit. His body was that he was set up as a watchman waiting for the consolation of Israel. It means there was a promise that was given to Israel and this man was watching to see the manifestation of the consolation of Israel. In order for God to do something in your family, he needs to deploy a watchman. And every watchman has the mission statement. A watchman can be assigned to a territory. A watchman can be assigned to an individual. Hallelujah. There was this great pastor who was so anointed. And there was a watch, watchman that was attached to him. Because the destiny of the city where that man was, was tied to the anointing that God had placed upon his life. If the man should die, Satan will rule. And because of that, he had to be armed with watchmen that were ensure that Satan would not take advantage. Are you with me? So a, a watchman can be assigned to a person. A watchman can be assigned to a nation. Your, your scope of assignment is consistent with the allocations of the grace of God. It doesn't mean that someone that is assigned to a nation is higher in rank than someone that is assigned to a person. But if the purpose of God will find expression, ah, I think the way I was supposed to start this message, I started it not to. I would have shown you that there are angels that are water angels. And then there are men that are water men. No, we'll still talk about the water angels. And there are also demons that are watcher demons. And I will show you the technology of how to strengthen the watcher angels over and above the watcher demons in the implementation of the plan of God. You see, many of you don't know that when we, we do the publicity for crusade, how many of you like our last publicity material for the crusade? There are demons that watch over the territory, hoping that you and me will compromise and give the devil ground so that those watcher demon spirits can inform Satan that their disobedience has created an opening so that Satan can come and exploit. There are also angels in the territory waiting for you to obey God, waiting for you to yield to God and that is going to translate to possibilities of God having dominion over the territory. And in view of that, the water angels will inform the other coalition of messengers to come take possession of the, the landscape that your obedience has redeemed. Do you understand? And so, if you go to the book of Zacharias, you will find angels whose job description is just to be doing measurement. That's all they do. So, when you lie and concede to the devil, concede to the enemy, you want a cheap way out. You have lost ground. So, the angels will now measure the new measurement. The new measurement that is occasioned by your disobedience and uh, he has given certain allowance, so God has lost ground. So they need to measure to get the up-to-date territory that God can influence. And the day you yield to the Holy Ghost, and you deny the devil, and you stay up in prayer, and you win a victory in the spirit, you have gained more influence. The angels will need to come and measure. And those angels always have work to do because the scales are either being lost or being gained. I have this determined that my life will only win trophies for Jesus Christ. It will only win territory. It will only win jurisdiction for the Holy Spirit in my generation. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. So in somewhere in the lecture, I'm going to show you the layout of angelic watchers and how Daniel was able to partner with angelic watchers overhead. And that was what gave him the privilege of entering into the economy of some sealed revelations. Those things existed in God, but they were sealed. 
But there were several things that Daniel did, and we could see the partnership between angelic watchers and the natural watchers to, over, to tip the scales and to turn the, st the tables and to give God the advantage. The cosmic war is a reality. And I trust that God will give us understanding. So we'll go into that. It's complex, a bit complex, but we'll take time to do the teaching at that level so that you will know what you, will, you can do that will empower the angelic watchers over the city of Makoti. There are several things that you can do that will empower the angelic watchers that are watching over your family. There are several things that you can do and we are going to be taught during the course of this lectures. There was a certain woman that had an ailment called a strange kind of ailment. The ailment, the woman was a barometer. Are you with me? That revealed the state of a certain church. If the spiritual capacity of the church begins to appreciate, the woman will become healed. She will become well. Do you understand that? And when the spiritual capacity of the church begins to de decline, she will start becoming sick. Her liberty was tied to either the alignment of the church or the disalignment of the church. If you want to know if the church is aligned, just check the woman's health. Do you understand that? And it came to pass that three witches were posted into that church. And the watcher of the church died at the age of 96. Having served for 52 years as a veteran watcher, a vacuum was created in the congregation that nobody could feel. It was at the instance of the death of this watcher that three witches were introduced into the church. Guess what happened? Huh? Your guess is as good as mine. The woman, a strange ailment came upon the woman and unfortunately she died because the kingdom of darkness took over. There was a functionary that was quietly functioning, operating, that was responsible for the survival of that church. The purpose of the church was locked on his activities, even though his activities were not as prominent as that of the pastor. God will need to wait oh, on your family until a watcher arises. Then his chances of influencing that family will be increased. I pray you will give God in your act of watching the much needed earthly permission for heavenly interference in the name of Jesus. All right. You know, we said that watchers, they watch in the spirit for three specific activities. The first is watching to see what the enemy is doing. That is the subject of tonight. Second is watching to see what angels are doing. Thirdly, watching to see what God is doing. And, and I need to tell us today that there are three categories of watchers that are consistent with the things that we need to watch. Are you with me? You're not with me. Do you notice in the account of Simeon that we just read? Are you still with me? Notice that Simeon's activity was, he was, he was a, a watcher that was watching the move of God. The Bible says that he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Are you with me? It's not as if he, he can't pick the activity of angels or, but that's not his major calling. His major calling is watching to, uh, to know the move of God. Hallelujah. There are several preachers in the body of Christ that are called to watch the move of God and uh, to unveil the strategy that is needed for us to align with God adequately. Those are special messengers. You may not have the gift they have, but they are, 
their operation is for the bodies, to strengthen the body. And if you ignore them, you are likely to be outside of the move of God. No matter how gifted you are, you will need to pay attention to the watchers. Hallelujah. Now, so there are so, some watchers that their job description is to trace and track the move of God, the development of the move of God in the territory, and uh, to enlighten the believers on how to align with God at every level of the development of his move. We will, we will look into that. It's quite complex, but we'll look into it um, very critically. But Anna, Prophetess Anna and um, Simeon are good examples of functionaries with that capacity. For the purpose of our lecture this evening, the emphasis is to see the first category of watchers, which are watchers that are set up with the capacity to design the activities of the enemy. Esther chapter 3 from verse number 1. Esther chapter 3 from verse Number one. And after these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamedata, the Agagite, and advanced him and set him, set his seat above the princes which were with him. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Then the king's servants which were in the gate said unto Mordecai, Why transgressed thou the king's commandment? Now it came to pass when they speak daily unto him and he hearkened not unto them that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand for he had told them that he was a Jew. The reason for which he refuses to make obeisance and to worship Haman. What's the reason? <laughs> He was what? Oh. I don't have time. I don't have time with that. But I believe it's self explanatory But it's, it's deep. It's deep. All right. So let's go on. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him obeisance, then Haman, then was Haman full of wrath. And he taught to scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had shown him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai, in the first month. That is the month of Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, they cast Paul, that is, the lot, before him and from day to day and from month to month to the twelfth month, that is, the month Adar. And Haman said unto King Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all provinces of thy kingdom. And their laws are diverse. Oh, my God. My God. We're just underlining the PowerPoint. Uh, if the Lord leads us thus, we will look at it. Their laws are diverse. All right. From all people, neither keep there the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's Profit to suffer them or to allow them. If he praise the king, let it be written that there, be that there may be destroyed. 
and I will pay ten talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business to bring it into the king's treasuries. Haman was willing to pay for the slaughter. I'll take responsibility for the huge sum that will be expended in shedding the blood of the Jews. It was one Jew he encountered, but he found out that that Jew was not isolated in the practice that brought so much wrath to him. It was actually cultural. He said, their laws are what? Divers. Well, this, what I'm reading here is the script of how Satan plans to unleash mayhem on the people of God. All right. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it to him and the son of Hamadatta, the Agagite, the Jew's enemy. And the king said unto him, and the silver is given to thee, the people also. Do with them as it seemeth good unto thee. It means this man has been given state support to implement the object of his vengeance. Now, can we check Esther chapter 4, verse 1 quickly as we begin the journey? When Mordecai perceived all that was done, can you underline perceive? That is to say that there was no tail bearer that brought the news to Mordecai. It was by perception that Mordecai knew what was going on. You know, I told you that there are some watchers that are more gifted in perceiving the plans of the enemy. And I need to tell us the need for such watchers. And I also need to tell us, just in case you are such a watcher, um, I need to explain your spiritual experiences to you. Are you still with me? All right, so Mordecai perceived all that was done. Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the city, into the midst of the city and cried with a loud voice and a bitter cry. And it came to pass before the king's gate it came even before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was a great mourning among the Jews, and fasting, and weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maid and their, her chamberlains came and told it her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved and she sent Raymond to Mordecai because Esther had not yet perceived the reason for which Mordecai had sackcloth on. So she he thought that he, his wardrobe was boggled. And so she made haste and sent him Raymond. <laughs> but the reason for his grief was about something that the devil was planning that he did what? He perceived. This is a special kind of watchman. Especially if you are into pastoring, you are laboring over the lives of people, and you, you are already a watchman. You know, I said watchmen are prophets. Watchmen are intercessors. Watchmen are prophetic people. I need to say something about the prophetic. Just like Pastor Abike was saying when he was leading prayers. If you become serious about your prayer life, just like some of us have decided to be serious, and you are consistent in praying, consistent in fasting, consistent in praying, 
consistent in fasting, a time will come, God will begin to send the intelligence your way. That means your spiritual senses will be activated. You'll be able to see in the realm of the spirit as the Lord wills. You'll be able to hear in the realm of the spirit as the Lord wills. You'll be able to perceive in the realm of the spirit as the Lord wills. You'll be able to understand things that you were not taught as the Lord wills. You will know things that you did not learn as the Lord wills because every intercessor that becomes consistent is conscripted into the duty of watching. And everything that God wants to do must be midwifed by a watcher. And just in case you are in politics, oh, there is so much need for watching in politics because most of the people we are contending with are, have ranking with the devil. Most of the people that you are trying to achieve some stuff with have their hands in mysteries of darkness. And so you are supposed to dust your prayer mat and get ready for the watches. There is a guarantee that you have when you sign up to become a watchman, God is under obligation to give you spiritual intelligence. The man Mordecai was in his place doing his natural work. He was doing his job. Please help me tell your neighbor there's a difference between your job and your work. For instance, your job pays salary, your work pays reward. Still preaching, you are still preaching, you are still preaching. The motivation for your job is money, the motivation for your work is purpose. In the Garden of Eden, God gave Adam not a job, but work. Preach, preach. <laughs> and the reason why I'm making you preach is because if you get a job with Zenith Bank, don't think that is your purpose. It's your job. I've seen several people in Lagos. They wake up 5 a.m. in the morning, hop on the bus, and they get to Victoria Island and get, get back home 11 in the night and they do that for 27 years, do that for 34 years. <laughs> and then they go to jo uh, church as a culture. And they believe they are doing something great. You, <laughs> the systems of this age are helping to waste your potential. Mordecai was assigned to the gate of the king, but he knew his work. His job was a security personnel, but his work was the work of a watchman. It was because of his work that he tore his garments and wore sackcloth and ashes. Not because there was strike. Not because his salary was delayed. Oh my God. Are you with me? Okay. So, the, his salary was coming. He was still effective on his job. But he did not forget what? His work. He had earned laurels, laurels in the kingdom where he served. And there were opportunities for him to have been redeployed from the gate. He insisted that his position will be where? The gate. Why? Do you still remember? Do you remember? Oh, you don't. I, don't. I don't think you do. Because in the culture of the Israeli people, what we call our Senate today, House of Assembly, places where decisions are made that are bind, binding on the populace. What we call, do you understand that? The House of Representatives is at the gate. That's where elders gather to take decisions that are binding on people that are in the city. Are you with me? So now that we're in a situation that was not Israel, but the man maintained the culture. He was an elder in his time. So he preferred the gate because of the significance of the gate. 
Even though he had opportunities to have been redeployed, he remained there because he reminded him of the strategic position of the elders at the gate. I don't have time to take you to the book of Lamentations where we see an obituary of a civilization, an obituary of a city. Part of the indicators of the obituary of, a, of the city was that the elders have ceased from the gate. It means they had no house of assembly anymore. They had no senate anymore. So any man could do what he wanted to do. There were no laws that re regulated the activities of people because that government at the gate was no longer in place. That's part of what constitutes the obituary of what? Oh, you're not with me. Oh. <laughs> Can we talk deep? We can't talk deep here. Oh, my God. Because you're already fainting. I'm seeing some people, they are, the blood pressure is going on. The man stayed by what? The gate. You need to be a Jew to know the meaning of that. He stayed where? Now, the point is this. It doesn't matter if you are in Zenith Bank, you work for, you are the special assistant to the, to the governor on religious matters, on traditional matters. That's your job. But you need to maintain your assignment at the gate. You are one of the people that should take, make legislations that will govern the city where you dwell. We have such authority as watchmen, but you cannot function as a watchman until God gives you the grace to be able to perceive. And what Mordecai perceived was the plan that the enemy had that he wanted to implement upon the Jews. I need to ask some of you, are you here? If you had a way to bug your enemy's cell phone, so that when he picks a call, you'll be hearing on the call. And then you found out that your name was discussed. That in the night, close to the suya joint, because you are, you are overtaken by suya, and you need to visit the suya joint every night. It's like a spell was cast on you. And you need to visit the suya joint. And a plan has been made to waylay you by the suya spot. Even if the demon of Suya has possessed you, because of that intelligence, what will you do? So if you have access, <laughs> hallelujah, if you have access to intelligence that concerns the plans of the enemy, it gives you an opportunity to plan against it. Yes. Part of the reasons why some of the things the devil plans come so part, they are shooting the arrow, they shot it, they took six months to create it. Because the Bible said no weapon. Form. Weapons are formed. So they checked your lifestyle. Checked the things you love. Check that you like red wine that is 4% alcohol content. <laughs> they checked your liberties. They checked your idols. And then formed a, a, a weapon that was consistent to all Those indices pertaining to your life. You see, weapons that are formed in the kingdom of darkness are idiosyncratic. They are particular. They are specific to the object matter. So a weapon designed for you will not work for me. So the devil is into custom building of weapons. Oh, man. Nobody can be as wise as a hunter. Because the hunter doesn't put the prey on notice before he comes to hunt. In fact, it's the praise carelessness that I'm free, I'm in liberty, that makes it vulnerable to the intelligent attempts of the hunter. But the watchers that have grace to perceive what is going on in the kingdom of darkness, they also have plans against the plan of the devil. Just like the devil builds a siege, you can also build a siege against the siege of the devil. 
If we have intelligence that will give us time to plan for the devil, you will see that the devil is not so strong. He takes advantage of the fact that you are not conscious of what is going on. So part of what God empowers us to watch about is to watch the activity of the enemy. Are you still with me? Mordecai did what? Passy. So I just came back for a, from a session of prayer myself. And I've already picked up a few points that the devil wants to achieve around my life. The first thing he wants to achieve is to get a false preacher to invite me to preach on his platform. The reason what, what the devil wants to achieve is to, is, to, is to corrupt, is to contaminate our convictions which we have carried for so many years. We have slaved because of our convictions. We have been insulted because of our convictions. People called us Jew because of our conviction. People say we are proud because of our convictions. So our convictions happens to be the meaning of our existence. Now he has seen how tenaciously we are willing to hold on to integrity. And he wants to do a fast one. You know what? It's only if you have a, an appetite that is not regulated by the Holy Ghost that Satan can win on your case. If you... If you cannot, um, if you see every invitation as an opportunity, one day you'll be preaching with the devil's microphone. <laughs> oh, are you with me? Second thing the devil wants to achieve is to create a, an accusation about me in 2022 that we make waves. Do you understand that? Now, listen, you are not with me. You know anybody anywhere can come and say, hey, you are a bad man. Is that possible? It's not possible. You have not traveled long. It's in the desert you've been walking, not on the highways. Because there is a, even spiritually, Satan is an accuser. Oh, okay. Let me now take you. What I'm saying is I've checked and I've heard the whispers of the enemy and the plans he has concerning my life. So I've also made plans. If it's only the devil. <laughs> For many of us, it's only the devil that is planning because you are oblivious of the plans of darkness. I have made plans also, and in keeping with my plans, the invitations I'm going to accept in 2022 are only from genuine men of God. Men that if I go before God, God says, yes, my son. Then I'm willing to respond to those invitations because I have received intelligence about the intention of the kingdom of darkness. Do you understand it? Part of the reason why God raised us as a ministry to raise the standard, to establish a plumb, a pl an apostolic plumb line. The body of Christ, we have wizards as pastors. We have former practitioners of divination on, with suit on the pulpit, trying to speak English. We have evil men saying Jesus, and they will not leave the name of Jesus. Do you understand that? So God, the, the cure to it is that God will raise original people that have not bowed themselves to the God of the age, the God of mammon, the God of performance, the God of lies, people that are in active service with the Lord. And when you see them, you will know the difference. Are you with me? And so the devil will fight to corrupt that possibility, just like the kingdom of darkness wanted John the Baptist out of the way because he was the only one that, that stood for the truth. His voice was not bought. If you don't know what Satan wants to achieve around your life, you will play into his arena. So the first thing that God raises a watchman to discern is to know the plans of the kingdom of what? So every year, I seek intelligence. Are you with me? 
if you are, if your God is invitation, you will fall. If your God is money, if your God is fame, you have fallen already. If your God is popularity, you can you cannot be quiet. You can't operate from the background. You must say, I'm on television. Ah. They will invite you. BBC will invite you. And that invitation will be the end of you. So part of the reasons why you need to receive intelligence is so that you can build your own siege against the siege of the devil. Please help me tell your neighbor. Don't let not Satan be the only one planning. You have to plan also. <laughs> and I tell you, by the special mercy of God, we will disappoint Satan again in 2022. I have received mercy from him. Watch it. These are the days when we need to streamline ourselves and build a brotherhood that is true. So that we can set a standard in the body of Christ. If I'm not popular, to God be the glory. If I don't have fame, to God be the glory. My prayer is not to be the most powerful. I just want to serve the will of God in my generation. Hallelujah. It's, 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 it's big enough for you to serve his will. There's nothing greater than that in the kingdom. I will not serve mammon. I didn't hear you. I will not serve vanity. I will not serve the lust of the flesh. I will not serve the lust of the eyes. I will be content with such things as I have. I will serve Jesus. Tell yourself those things every day because they are forces of darkness seeking to lure your soul so that you can, your, your security can be exposed. The Bible says that Mordecai Perceive. That's the way of the watchman. There is an enablement of the Spirit of God that gives you insight into spiritual knowledge. I'm talking about things that you were not taught, things that you cannot learn. I'm talking about things that you cannot receive from a lecture of a professor. You can't find it in the library. It is handed out by the Spirit of God Himself. Second scripture, quickly. Are you there in the book of Esther? Okay. Um, yeah, let's continue. Esther chapter 4, jump to verse 4 to 8. Esther 4, 4 to 8. Esther 4, 4. So Esther's maid and her chamberlains came and told her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved and she sent Raymond to clothe Mordecai and to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. Then called Esther for Hattach, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon her, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. And Hattach, Hattach went forth to Mordecai unto the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him all, the, all that had happened unto him and the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them. Also, he gave him the copy. Now, I would like you to see the things that watchmen have access to because of their diligence in keeping the watches. First of all, are you here? Oh, my. He told the queen's messenger the sum of the matters. He told the Queen's messenger, the amount that Mordecai was going to pay for the destruction of the Jews, he also brought evidence there was a copy of the command, commandment that created premise for him to unleash his wrath and his vengeance on the children of Israel. 
When you, when you sit, when you begin to function diligently, are you here? In the capacity of the watchman, God will begin to give you details. Details about the activity of the kingdom of darkness and he will even give you insight into the things that happened in the territory that legitimized the activities in your family, the activities in the land, the activities in your life. Those are spiritual details. And if you are devoid of spiritual knowledge in this wise, you can do no damage to the kingdom of darkness. The weapons of darkness are sealed in hyperintelligence. There are judicial premises that are exploited to do vengeance according to wickedness. I pray the Lord will open our understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you still there? To show it unto Esther and to declare it unto her, and to charge her that she should go into, in unto the king to make supplication unto him and to make requests before him for her people. Do you realize that God gave no, Esther no revelation? Esther was going to be the hand through which all the mercy that has been gathered through supplication was going to be extended. Esther was going to be the face through which God will have done with so much favor because the watchmen, a watchman can regulate the situation. Their activities and efforts can baptize a man with favor. Not for himself, but for the purposes of God to prosper. Watchmen, when they are lacking, even the brightest will be ignored. The best will be forsaken. The strongest will fall in battle. Watch me. The question tonight is how much insight do you have of the devil's plan? We need to build a siege against the siege of the devil. Second Kings chapter 6 from verse 8 to 12. Second Kings chapter 6 from verse 8 to to 12. Where's the man on the keyboard? He's, he's, at, he's enjoying scriptures. Hallelujah. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servant saying, in such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there, not once or twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will he not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of the king's servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet. That is in Israel. He tell the king of Israel the words that thou speakest <laughs> in thy bedchamber. Is it possible that from among us a watchman will receive so much anointing that he's, he will have a divine hearing aid to perceive as much as what is spoken in the highest ranks of the meetings in the kingdom of darkness? Is it possible? If we do not have intelligence, that was how we played many years ago. And insecurity hit us hard. Many good men have died because of the laxity of the watchmen. Because the Bible says, while men slept, it was only in that window that the enemy was able to come. 
The watchmen of the last generation have exposed us to the fury of our enemies. A new set of watchmen must, be, must rise. A new breed without greed. A radical opposition against unrighteousness. Men that will stand before God and learn the technology of how to move his hand over their generation. It is Elisha. There is no traitor among us. He has the ear of God. And he can hear the secrets in thy bedchamber. <laughs> the king now knew that there was no need to fight Israel. There was every need to fight Elijah. Number one, if most of what you see in your dreams, in your encounters, are plans of the enemy, because there's one of us here, he only sees the plans of the enemy. So I now sat the person down. I said, because the person thinks that the dreams are prophecies. I said, no, your dreams are not prophecies. You are a watchman. And the anointing that you have gives you access to see the devil's plans. All these things you are saying will not come to pass. But they are planned. And if we sleep, it will come to pass. That's what you are called to see. You are not called to prophesy them. Because if we are alive, those things will not see the light of day. But you have a gift. And if I'm not mistaken, among all of us sitting here, the person I speak of has that gift much more. Because that is the area of the person's calling. It's like Elisha that can see, hear the import of the meetings that are put up to bring darkness, wickedness, wickedness on the people of God. Do you realize just as God has plans for your life, the devil has plans for your life? Oh, you have not gone deep enough. Once upon a time, there was a woman that a certain church claimed was a prophet. So she does something like prophecy. And during one of the services, a mighty preacher was ministry. And she did something like prophecy and pointed him and said, Ah, he's seen him. His car hit a tree and he died. That's the plan of the devil. She just prophesied it. She just said it. Are you with me? But this prophet is experienced. He knew that revelation was not from God. Through the gift of discernment of spirit. I will stop there. I will not proceed on what happened. But you see, just like God has plans that you can pray and know, the devil also has plans that you can pray and if God is willing to show you, you can also know. Are you with me? If you are a watchman and the grace upon you is sensitive to detecting the secrets in the kingdom of darkness, the things you are receiving is not for prophecy. Those things are subject to change. If the ministry of your watches will prosper, those things will never come to pass. Because Elisha had that gift and she could hear what was being said in the king's chamber, the king decided to send the army to, to bring Elisha down. Any one of you that has a, the ear to hear the secrets of darkness, listen to me, you become a major object of satanic attack. You, you need to become used to spiritual warfare. Uh, I've seen people with this grace, they say, why is this? That my own attack is hard. It's too much. I laugh. You don't know what God called you for. That's why, you see, people that know that they will lift weight. Do you understand? They practice at home. People that know that they play soccer. They don't eat pande. They don't eat apple. They have their diet. Do you understand? That's why I like if I will watch soccer, it means that, um, what's that guy's name? The Portuguese man. Huh? Ronaldo. He must be on the pitch because he's the only one that makes sense to me. I don't know what, how, why they call the rest professionals. I, I'm still wondering. 
May the Lord give you understanding. Sometimes I believe I can, I can perform. I know you don't believe, you don't believe my abilities. <laughs> but you have not heard my story. I played for black soccer. I played for black soccer. I played eight. One of these days, we need to buy a ball. Um, Alphonsus, buy a ball. Let's try ourselves. <laughs> the reason why I like Ronaldo is because I have a, a little insight into the way he, he trains, what he eats. I don't think anybody can match him. His fitness is on the super side. And then you have gifts that can expose the devil and you don't train yourself for warfare. You are joking. Satan will come at you with all of his machinery. And that's what happened. The king sent his army against one man, one watcher. And the servant cried out, can't you see the danger? And the solution to the servant's unbelief, fear, was the gift of sight. The moment the servant saw <laughs> the security system around the watchers, his faith was helped. Do you know that the greatest source of faith is sight? Ooh. This building you are sitting in, we saw it. It is madness to try to build this building. It's, you are mad. If you want to build this, you are mad. Especially when you have only 5 million in your, in your bank account. You are a madman. You should be jailed to even conceive that you could build. But you know what? We saw it. He showed us. It's just like you can take away the coat of many colors, but you cannot take away something that someone saw. It's real. No thief can break in and steal it. No thief. The foundation alone was 55 million. In northern Nigeria? You are joking. You didn't steal money from politics? Just faith? We didn't manipulate one person for the building? Think about it. It's only what you see that is yours. Indeed. We saw it. And there was nothing the devil could do could, to stop it to, from coming to pass. The Bible said, they that observe lying vanities, they forsake their mess. What is real to you? What is real to me is what I see. I saw it by God. And heaven and earth can pass away. But that which God shows, he will bring it to pass. Guess what? I've seen something else. And what I saw is that this hall became too small. We now had, we now had a, a positive problem. <laughs> oh. They can take your, your car. Just like I went to report in Lagos, they stole my, my car. Toyota can with good air conditioning. But you know what? There was something devil could never take away things that I saw. I've seen nations bow to the cross of Christ. It doesn't matter how many constellations of demons guard the territory. I have seen it. The language of the, of the waters, I have seen it. I have seen it. And when God wants to train watchers, what he does, he will, he will ask the son of man, what siesta to train your perception? Because it's what you see that is truly real. The things that are seen with the natural eyes, they are temporal, the Bible says. That means if all of the sight you have is the scene that comes from your eyes, you are blind. I see. You don't need to beg to see. Just stay in intercession. The faculties of sight, of perception, of understanding, that will pop open. When those faculties pop open, then you can say like David, I have more understanding than my teachers. There's an economy of knowledge that is beyond that which a man can research into from the soil of his soul. Oh my God. Get ready. If God gives you intelligence about the kingdom of darkness, the first thing you should expect is 
you become a major object of satanic attack. And I need to teach you how to deal with attacks. Many of you are afraid. Oh, it's too late to be afraid though. You know what? Because the Bible said we wrestle. It didn't say we are about to wrestle. We are practicing. You are, it said what? We wrestle. Your opinion was not sought before the wrestling was scheduled. The Bible says what? We wrestle. We wrestle. We wrestle. So I need to teach you how to wrestle. Because the only problem with Goliath was that there was a hole in his armor. If you wrestle, you cannot afford a hole in your armor. We wrestle. Please help, help me tell your neighbor. Your neighbor is not aware. Tell him, we wrestle. We are not about to wrestle. We are not planning to wrestle. But we wrestle. Second thing you should expect. That watchman that has the ear to hear what the, Satan, what the devil is saying, what Satan is saying, planning to do, provides the most strategic insight and intelligence in counteracting demonic activity. So this kind of messenger, are you with me? This kind of messenger, another attribute of the person's ministry is that the person must be willing to warn. You see, when you see Satan's activity, what do you do? Warn. You're not with me. You do what? Do you know I was in Lagos? I finished from offshore work, came back famished, and I fell on the bed and I started dreaming. And I saw one of my friends, and we were in the Senate building in Abuja. Somebody finished addressing the Senate, and then he came and seized the microphone from the person speaking, and he pointed to a senator and said, You are sitting on my seat. Then the vision left. The dream left. I woke up and then I began to pray. And then God now told me that the kingdom of darkness is about to set him up so that he can lose his seat in the spirit. I told him. I warned him. He said, no, I just finished 70 days of fasting and prayer. My wife was involved with a whole congregation. We bowed down to God to pray. Hey. And he demeaned the prophet that was warning him. Uh, that same man slept into false doctrine. He lost favor in the body of Christ and the gates of the body were shut to him. You know what? His blood is not on my hand. I warned him. I saw what Satan wanted to do but he was too proud to receive warning from a small boy like myself. I told him your seat will be taken. He said, no, I, 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 I've been laboring. I just, uh, I communed with in the sanctuary of God. May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> when you see, you do what? You warn. Such are the ways of prophets. Because we still need men in the body of Christ that will warn us that danger is coming. No one told us that the beast of wickedness will come into our territory and take blood. No one told me. No one warned me. God will put some words on your heart and he will send you to people to warn them. Be polite. Be, be, be humble. But warn. Number three. This set of watchmen that watches the activity of the enemy is the greatest tool in the hand of God to expose Satan. Satan is weak when he's exposed. We saw three preachers in the body of Christ in the cutting edge of the move of God and Satan was trying to contaminate them and if he doesn't succeed to contaminate them, he wants to create an accusation that we fight against their mantle. That was an intelligence from the spirit. And 
that's part of our assignment. Because when truth prospers, deception will die in natural death. The death of deception is upon us and Satan wants to react. But he will fail again. We wrestle. So because of this category of watchmen, I'll have to teach you about wrestling. Listen to me. You cast out devils. You say, get her. That's true. And they go. But you will wrestle with princes. You don't cast out princes. You, you wrestle with them. And Jesus said that the prince of this world cometh and he found nothing in him. Remember that, the that, that Jesus was driven into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. I will show you the wrestling of demonic princes. I will show you the aspect of the wrestling that has to do with your flesh. I will show you the aspect of the wrestling that has to do with your lust. I will show you the aspect of the wrestling that has to do with your mind. It is then that I can show you the helmet of salvation. The breastplate of righteousness. The sword of the spirit. The reason why I need to show you is because we, we wrestle. We wrestle. We wrestle. We are not about to wrestle. We are not planning to wrestle. But we wrestle. I'm going to pray tonight. Prayer point number one. I need to give you scripture for every prayer point. A true watchman must be equipped with scripture. If you want to lead people in prayer, find the scripture. You yourself, you go and pray first and God will inspire you and give you scriptures. And because you have been trained in the scriptures, you will produce a catalog of scriptures that are along the line witness of the spirit. That's how to lead prayer. Not just to come and speak in tongues. Matthew chapter 13 verse 4. 14. Quickly. Matthew 13 verse 14. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah which said by hearing ye shall hear and not understand. And seen ye shall see and not perceive. That means when a watchman hears, he understands. When a watchman sees, he what? He perceives. For someone whose spiritual senses are, are not trained, you will hear words of deliverance. It will make no meaning to you. Can we pray tonight? So that by hearing, I will understand. And by seeing, I shall perceive. Rise on your feet, let's pray together. A blind man, a spiritually blind man is a man that lacks understanding. It's a man that lacks perception. He will go headlong into the cause of his demise. He will embrace his serpent. He will cleave to an adder. He will be affectionate to a beast. So that by hearing we shall hear and by seeing, we shall perceive. Can you ask, Lord, deliver me from blindness? Let me understand by your spirit. Let me become wise by the Holy Ghost. Let me see danger before it comes. Let me hear the cry before the disaster awakes. 
Let me perceive the plans of the kingdom of darkness so that I can raise a siege against the siege of the enemy. I can't hear you. You are whispering. You are whispering. 2022 is a year of war. There is warfare in the spirit. It is my duty to prepare you. The landscape is tense. The kingdom of darkness rages. Satan is about to suffer great loss. And because of this, his wrath has been kindled. Grant, O oh God, that by hearing, I will understand. And by seeing, I will perceive. That some things that you will hear the spirit of God will quicken an emphasis an understanding that is beyond the hearing that I will not be dull that I will not be dull in understanding but the Lord will cause the eyes of my understanding to be enlightened so that I will see the finger of the enemy I will hear the whisper of the culprit I will hear the voice of the traitor Lago seminata. Iga makombe la ito kobreskete kobokoto. La toskiza ze la kunda branta babola kate bandelia. Shama kabalata baboko teme. Abrasketo bahi. Abrasketo siku prendo kombo kodobo kosonia. Iyaga deko tape la makude. You cannot enter into 2022 casually. It is not, it is not appropriate. Satan has risen. The kingdom of darkness has risen. The powers of the devil has risen. We also rise. In the name of our God we rise. By the spirit of God we rise. We rise by superior intelligence. We rise by the Holy Ghost. We rise by the inspiration of the spirit. Cause oh God our hearts to understand. Cause oh God our hearts to perceive cause oh God to hear to hear and perceive by your spirit We cry because of our families. We cry because of our children. We cry because of our nation. Yeah. In hearing I will understand. And in seeing I will perceive. verse 18 Matthew 22 verse 18 quickly on the board Matthew 22 verse 18 but Jesus perceived their wickedness people were speaking but what did Jesus perceive may the Lord may the Lord open our understanding people were speaking 
People were talking. But the watchman was able to perceive their wickedness. May the Lord give us grace in 2022 so that beyond the voice, you can perceive the motive. You can perceive what is behind the voice. There is something they are desperate to hide. But beyond the voice, Jesus could pick up the wickedness. He could pick up the envy. Can we pray? Cause me to see beyond the words and pick the secrets in the hearts of men behind the words. Can you pray? And he perceived their wickedness. And he perceived. He perceived their wickedness. He perceived their motive. He perceived what they wanted to achieve. Can somebody cry? We need help. There is no form of intelligence that can give you this insight. We need to become wise by the Spirit. He perceived it. He perceived it. They could not conceal it. They could not hide it. He perceived it. He saw it. He saw wickedness in the heart of their plans. Open my understanding. Yambo roko sotela hika braskata Yamba rakus eromosi ramina katele avala moteli kubres kapa kubela kute alaso kambela mantalia agabes koteli reko tame na kute kabaka tame na katelunge asi and he perceived their wickedness he saw their wickedness he saw their wickedness. They could not hide it. It was visible to the watchman. It was visible to the watchman. His spiritual senses were active. It was visible to him. He perceived it. Activation. All the powers of perception. Make me wise by the Holy Ghost. Mosika braska ya la mantala ya lolo mena kubes braska toma ya kamelai to kompele a rumena si ke toma la kubelaida in the name of Jesus Luke chapter five verse twenty two Luke five twenty two. But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, What reason ye in your heart? This is, they didn't tell him their thoughts, so he perceived it. I'm talking about bandwidth of perception. Bandwidth. There's a bandwidth that can perceive wickedness. There's another bandwidth that can perceive what? Thoughts. Oh, you're yeah, not with me. Can we ask God to increase our bandwidth? Can, can we ask Him? You know, the Bible says that men look on the outward, but God, He looks where? On the heart. May the Lord increase our bandwidth so that we can even perceive thoughts. Increase my perception. I cannot survive by my learning. My understanding will not matter much. Increase the bandwidth. The bandwidth of my perception. I will not stroll into danger. In 2022, I will perceive danger. Before it manifests, I will sense the chaos. Before it finds expression, I will be exempted from the disaster because of my superior perception. And he perceived the attack. Oh my God. Eko Sapakura Mansa Light. Rumbe 
Kelele kusketa mina kadania La sose Brenka matanda baroko se mina kadania Ava rata makonde Braskito beranku tania The bandwidth of my perception Let it be on the increase Make me intelligent Make me wise By the Holy Ghost Cleanse my blindness Deliver me from blindness in the spirit. system dwells there. And that's why Paul says, henceforth know we no man by the flesh. God needs to make you travel into the ecosystem of the heart of a man, of a woman that you call your friend, your acquaintance, someone that you can commit your secrets to. He perceived what? Their craft. I went for prayer and fasting. And when I went to finish a prayer, I visited a friend. And I met two people with that friend. In the atmosphere, I knew that these people, has, they, they just finished talking about me. Negative. I perceived it. So there was no need to complete the visit. I turned back. And the friendship ended that day. And they were wondering. Because they knew nobody made any call there to inform me. Perception. Many times the difference between life and death is just a little perception. The difference between a mistake and wisdom is what? Perception. You, will, you don't understand the tragedy of life until you put your life in the hands of a crafty person. The blow will be below the belt. Something that if you don't find grace from God, you cannot recover. In the atmosphere, I sensed it. Nobody was speaking when I entered, but I sensed it. And that was the end. May you, may you run away before the explosion takes place may you sense the danger before it comes so that you can, oh my God, you need to build a siege against the siege of the enemy. The gift of the watchman is perception. Finally, can we pray again? Increase the perception, the bandwidth of my perception. Let me not be blind. I will not take destiny decisions in the night. In the blindness of darkness. In the blindness of the night. I will not take decisions under the light of the dwindling sun. But I will be counseled by the intensity of the light of the Holy Ghost. Increase the bandwidth of my perception. Upgrade my perception, O oh God.
please you may be seated father in the name of jesus uh, we ask that you shine on us shine on us this morning and take all the glory and the praise in the name of jesus i appreciate my friend again for the opportunity to be at the Lecky Lecky campus. God bless Pastor B. We we started a journey um, at the first service and it's an adventure of faith. We are looking at the foundations of faith. The foundations of faith. So in the first service we looked at foundations of faith spiritual facts and now we are looking at foundations of faith divine promises turn your bible to the book of romans chapter 4 romans chapter number 4 amen foundations of faith divine promises Romans chapter number 4, beginning from verse 13. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if there which are of the law be hers, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace I'll, I'll take time to explain that to the end what's the goal the promise might be sure to all the seed not to that only which is of the law but to that also which is of the faith of abraham who is the father of us all that's the first scripture, and that's where that's a laboratory where we'll be doing our experiments this morning. But to introduce this um, laboratory, we may need to do Romans chapter 10 quickly. Turn your Bible, the popular faith scripture, Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10. Verse number 17, the popular faith scripture. You know this scripture. It says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by what? Now, I'd like us to begin an investigation. We'll begin this lecture this morning with an investigation. I'd like us to do a linguistic recovery. We want to check that word of God. The word translated word in that scripture. So faith cometh by hearing and what? And hearing by the word of God. You, 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 if you are acquainted with King James rendering, which is the best rendering I, in my own opinion, what happened in that scripture is an attempt to show you the kind of hearing that we're talking about. Because you understand hearing in a certain context. And the fit ear is different from your natural ear. So he's trying to introduce you to another kind of hearing. And it's based on the second kind of hearing that is about to introduce to you now that you can receive faith. First investigation we need to do, which I said is linguistic, is the word word. If you have um, a lexicon, a Bible that is digital, and you can launch a linguistic investigation, if you click on word, you will find rhema. 
faith cometh by hearing, the kind of hearing that captures the rhema of God. Are you still with me? Now, just in case someone is saying, why is he speaking Greek? I came with a dictionary to explain rhema in English language. Hallelujah. So, just in case you have a strong lexicon, you'll find a pilot number G4483. That's what captures rhema. Rhema fundamentally is an utterance, a spoken word, a proceeding word. We are talking about the foundations of faith. It's the reason why we need to investigate the foundations of faith is because so many people claim to be walking in faith, and if we test the content of their faith, it is not established on the foundations. The, you can be engaged in an activity that looks so much like faith, but it is not a product of what is foundational. And uh, that kind of faith cannot move mountains, can't produce results. So I want to show you something quickly so that you understand how faith works. How, what is the proof that I'm actually walking in faith and walking by faith? Okay, the dictionary says um, that which is or has been uttered by the living voice, thin spoken word. So rhema is not a disposition that God sustains in the privacy of his heart. Rhema is the spoken word of God. And the Bible is saying that faith cometh by hearing. And just so that you not be confused, it's a different kind of hearing. is a hearing of faith where our spirits are trained to hear the proceeding word of God that comes out of the mouth of God. So we may need to paraphrase that scripture to lend it to understanding faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the voice of God. Because if God doesn't utter his voice, you will never receive revelation, the present revelation position that is captured in the spirit about a matter. Exactly. Now, once upon a time, a guy came to me. He says, Pastor, I want to go for youth service and I... Um, want to, um, you to pray for me so that my journey into youth service will be fruitful. I said, that's not how it works. Because most people um, outsource their responsibilities and believe that it is summed up in a pastor's prayer. As powerful as our prayers are, I need to show you how it works. I told him, you need to go to God and extract a promise from God. Then when you extract a promise from God, come to pastor. Because you need to believe in the Lord your God in order for you to be established. But you need to believe in his prophets. God has given us the ability to bequeath to you what it takes for you to flourish. What it, the circumstances and situations that will be conducive for the word of God that you have received to come to pass. We can bless you with that. So the guy went and took a fast, and he came back and said, I don't understand. God spoke, but I don't understand. He gave me a scripture. And what was the scripture? The scripture was that the cruise, you know that scripture that um, Elijah told the widow woman? He said, the barrel of meal shall not waste, and the cruise of oil shall not fail. Hallelujah. I said, I, I think um, the word is clear. The cruise of oil. <laughs> it shall not fail. So when he came with that word, I blessed him. Go and prosper. In the light of these words that the Lord has given unto you. And he went to the place. He happens to be an expert in, in mathematics. So he began to teach mathematics. And, and um, the, the keg that he came with, the keg of palm oil that he came with, um, when he's about to run out, then one of the guys he's teaching will feel the sense of responsibility to send him palm oil. And he tops that cake, all right? So he kept topping it for one year. The, the first time he successfully emptied the cake of palm oil was his passing out parade day. 
So, the cruise of oil did not fail according to the word of God. If we're talking about the foundations of faith, then we need to ask you. Because you, many of us think faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Bible. And then you believe that everything that is in the Bible is for you. No. It is that which God takes out of the pages and applies, furnishes upon your heart that is yours. Faith is very personal. Faith is self-centered. Faith, faith, are you with me? Yes. Very personal. There can, a, a declaration can go forth and it goes forth in the congregation like this. Whether or not it's appropriated in your life is whether or not you are in alignment with the Holy Spirit to apply that on your heart. When it's applied upon your heart, it stops being a general thing. It becomes a personal thing. And so the Bible reveals that Abraham had a promise. And I need to show you the kind of promise that he had. It's, it's a kind of promise that was so large that it was unthinkable for him to expect that it could come to pass by his ability. You know, God is a good God. When he comes into your space, he will tell you things that you don't even have the ability to accomplish, that it is captured within your destiny, your possibilities in the future will be revealed in this wise. Just like when he came to me, he said, you are going to be a preacher. You need to know how terrible a stammerer I was. My mom heard me preach and she knew this was not her son because I had terrible speech impediments and the great monarch of Zion said, you are going to be my messenger. So one day I got frustrated. I lay on the altar, on the platform like this, fasting and praying, and I say, God, why do you want to make a mockery of me? And he spoke into my spirit. He said, as for you, this is the covenant I have with you. I have put my words in your mouth. Then I heard it with the ear of the spirit. And wisdom began to give me the understanding of his dimensions. I understood that if God has smuggled his word into my mouth, the word he wants me to speak, is no longer my responsibility to determine how it is spoken. So my challenge now is to go and seek God and get a word. Then it will be God's responsibility to give me the ability to speak. Even this morning, I had to wake up early in the morning. Cry. Oh, my. You don't, want to, you don't want to hear me speak if I don't find utterance. It will be a terrible moment. In fact, hallelujah. But you see, it's on the promise that God gave me. I'm still using that one promise for so many years in my spoken ministry. Faith has a foundation. And our father Abraham was given a promise by God. Now, now that it's a fasting season for the whole church, labor before God and get God to commit himself by a promise. This is what I'm going to do. Once he says it, then your faith has a foundation. Even if it tarry, wait for it. Because it will come to pass. For God is not a man that he should lie. God is not the son of man. He is not capable of lying. It's not part of what he can do. It's, he doesn't have the ability to lie. It's not that God is a gentleman. And even though he can lie, he chooses not. I'm saying God doesn't have the ability to lie. The ability to lie is not with him. So let's consider the promise God gave Abraham quickly. Are you there? Romans chapter 4. Romans 4, quickly. All right, so 13 to 16. The promise was that Abraham was going to be the heir of the world. Have you seen it there? Instead, 